good, essentially. So a new documentary about the untold story of black librarians is set to inspire and illuminate in 2025. I'm here with the mastermind of the documentary, Rodney E. Freeman Jr. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. How you? How about yourself? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate you. So um, are you a librarian? Yes, I am um, a librarian and archivist. Uh, I've been in the library world for... 15, 16 years now. So yeah. how did you get into uh being a librarian? Like, you know, how's that um how was your journey in that career path? Oh, um, it's it's been interesting. Um I started off as what we call in the library, we call them pages. So pages are the people who put put the books on the shelf. So I started off as a page in Kankakee Public Library uh a long, long time ago. Uh <laughs> And I was doing that because I was trying to actually get into law school. So I was doing that and then studying for the LSAT. And then I had a uh, library director pull me to the side and was like, no, you think, I think you'll be good in going into library science. I was just like, ah. I already had one master's degree. And I was just like, I didn't want to. I was like, I don't know how much it's going to pay. And she was like, well. If you get your with your um, uh, master's in public um, public administration and your uh, master's in library science, you can become a library director one day. And I was just like, oh, okay, um, how much do they pay? <laughs> and she showed me some jobs, and I was just like, oh, okay, so maybe this might be a career for me, or you know. And I was just like, but I I enjoyed what I was doing when I was at Kankakee. It was like, helping the kids. We were doing some youth programming and we was, you know, showing people how to use the computers and I was doing some classes. So I enjoyed that work. Um, and then, yeah, I went to library science school and then, um, you know, the school was good. And then I became a manager and then an administrator uh, and then a, a professor, assistant professor. So uh, my journey, and then I became a library director. So I did accomplish that goal. Yeah, uh, and then um, I wanted to start my own business, and uh, I took a job as an archivist while I'm doing my own business now. So that's where I'm at. Man, uh, you know, how is the experience being an African American librarian, you know, different than like you know being like you know, um, a white librarian? Yeah, it's it's vastly different, right? You know, because we feel pressures. We don't just get to come in and do the job and. And, and then think that we can just go home and, you know, everything is okay. That's, it's usually we get to come in and do the job and then we face all this other stuff that goes around it. Like, why are you here? Uh, you're, you're not qualified as I am to have the same position. Um, can you even do reference work and be able to, to catalog books and, you know, so it's, it's all this other stuff that goes around it that we have to face, you know? Uh, at the same time while we're trying to do the job, and, you know, and I think that's what makes it uh, a unique journey is that we're not only dealing with, you know, doing the job and showing people how to access information. We're also having to do battles, internal battles with our colleagues and with the administration sometimes to prove that we we belong there, you know, so that's that's a very unique thing. And then one of the things, too, is this becoming library directors. There's not that many uh black males as library directors, nor that many black women as library directors is still a majority. Is, I think the, the quoted number, and I'm gonna, I might misquote it here, but I know it's over 80% white female. Right. Um, and so it's not that many of us in these upper administrator positions. And then that means, you know, when you're, when you're in those positions, you can really kind of Governing how the branch runs, the collection, and all that other good stuff, but um, and that's why there's a, a push for us to minorities to be in those positions so we can be able to serve the communities that we're that we're in. Definitely. Uh, what is the solution to like you know attracting more people of color to the library yeah. confession? Yeah, yeah, and that's something that we've been trying to tackle for years. I was actually in one of the cohorts that was trying to tackle that. When I was in Indiana, um, it was called Indiana Leading in um, uh, Leading in Diversity, and uh, basically they were trying to recruit minorities from other professions because uh, the library profession typically is something 
um, it used to be where people, it was their second profession. You know, they've done something else. Like they were, they were a teacher, they were engineer, they were uh, some lawyers, and then they became and switched over to, to librarians. Now I think it's a little bit different, but um, you know, they were trying to recruit people from different professions, minorities from different professions. And, you know, it's, it's still that thing, you know, trying to recruit and retain because what, what it is is you can recruit and get them into school and then they get out and then they can't find a job. And then they might trickle back into their their the profession before this, you know. So that's another thing too. We need to make sure that we're recruiting, retaining, and then once they're in, be able to be promoted, you know, because that's another thing too. You know, you you don't want to stay at the same position for umpteen years if you're trying to move up, you know, if that's your goal, you know, if you're trying to say, hey, I eventually would like to be a library director. Well, how can we make sure that you have those mentors that are helping you? to continue to grow and move up into those positions. Most definitely. You know, book banning, it's um at a record high. Yeah. You know, um the right doesn't want uh people to read certain books. You know, as a librarian, like, you know, like what are your thoughts about like, you know, just like um them suppressing like, you know, information. Yeah, I hate it. I I, I don't I, I don't like any form of censorship. You know, that's just you know, the profession that I, <laughs> and it's just what my ideology, I feel like, why do you have to ban information? If you don't like something, then don't read it, you know, walk away. Uh, it's just like, you, you got stuff on TV. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Um, because you do a disservice for other people who might be interested in that. Um, I, I feel like though, this is not anything new and that's what the documentary is actually going to show. Like they have, there's been this, this constant, um, um, how do I want to put it? This um, concerted effort from even since slavery to make sure that some portions of the population cannot read, cannot have access to information. And that's what we want to kind of unveil in the documentary that, you know, they had during slavery, it was anti-literacy laws. You couldn't teach slaves how to read. You know, after slavery, there was literacy tests where then now we tell you that you can read, but you have to read to the way that I want you to read. And then we don't provide any type of resources for you to go and obtain that. So there was the first uh, African-American public library that was formed in Louisville, Kentucky, you know, and then these segre segregated facilities and how HBCUs helped in becoming quasi-academic and public libraries to serve the community. So there's a story there, how libraries had an important part in the civil rights movement when it came to sit-ins, you know? So, you know, there's a whole story there that a lot of people don't know about. So, yeah. What are some of your favorite books? <laughs> uh, Richard Wright, uh, Black Boy. That's my, that's my favorite book. I was telling, I was telling, I was even telling my, my, my fiance or my, um, uh, my daughter that the other day that that's that is one of my favorite books because we was watching something on James Baldwin. James Baldwin is another one of my favorite authors. Um, I'm a big comic book fan. Um, I love comic books, graphic novels. Um, you know, so so all of that. Yeah, like I uh, saw like that James Baldwin documentary recently, and like I thought that was like really incredible. Uh, like you know, he's oh, an yeah. incredible writer. I loved his uh play. He wrote like, you know, uh, Amen Corner, like a lot of times, like he doesn't get credit, like, you know, because he didn't write a yeah. whole bunch of plays, but I thought it was like really great. You yeah. know, um, you know, I think like, you know, reading is like, you know, so important, like, you know, what can it be done? Like, you know, to just like promote literacy, especially in our community. So there's, there's, there's a couple of things out there and in the documentary will also try to we won't tackle it all the way because that can be tackled in one documentary, but we will allude to that. If you're able to have role models or people who look like you, um, really encouraging you to, and books that have representation of you in it, you know, it is, you know, you can get kids to to read more, you know, or be interested in, in reading, um, you know, because it is, you know, a lack of representation and role models who are saying, hey, why don't you read this book? And then lack of representation in the books kind of is off-putting to kids. You know, if I don't, if I can't see myself, I remember growing up, I, I don't want to date myself, but I remember growing up and uh, it was hard pressed to find people who look like me in comic books. 
you know, that's why I gravitated so much towards uh, Milestone Comics, uh, their first uh, black comic book um, company that did a lot of stuff like with Static Shock and some other stuff. And, you know, I remember when they came out and I was like, man, that's a that's a that's a black kid on the cover that looks just like me. I'm going to pick this up, you know. So, yeah, I think, you know, if you can have those those uh, those books that have representation and you can have those role models encouraging kids to to pick up a book and read it for fun. Yeah. Do you feel like, you know, the social media, like, you know, the widespread availability of like the Internet and kids like, you know, obsession with like, you know, apps like TikTok um, yeah. is an obstacle, you know, for like librarians these days to get kids to read? No, um, yeah. Uh... I mean, depends on who you ask, right? You know, I I think I'm, I am one of the, I don't want to say new school librarians, but I'm one of the librarians that I, I do gravitate towards technology and I embrace it, um, and I I love it and I feel like you know yes, while I do want kids reading, but if we if we have to go out and advertise on TikTok and do you know I think uh, book talk is have been one of the more popular forms of the TikTok app, uh, part of the TikTok. Uh, so, you know, um, having, you know, social media that encourages you to read certain books. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, I, I think it's just another avenue to market your, your, your books and your, your information. So it's now, I mean, there has been stories of, you know, putting the material on there and then you know, in the feed that doesn't go up to the top. So therefore it's kind of suppressed and you can't find that type of information, but you know, there's other avenues on, on the internet. And then, you know, I see the stuff with, you know, uh, Roblox too, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids are in gaming and, you know, um, and I think that's another avenue that we need to get into as well is like, how can we get some, you know, a, a, a library, uh, in into a Roblox game, right? You know, I think kids will want to play around it if you make the game fun. Uh, so, so yeah, right, yeah, like uh, man, uh, Rodney Freeman, you're very insightful. Are you a librarian? The Untold Story of Black Librarians scheduled for release at the top of 2025. Uh, where will people be able to see it? Like, you know, hopefully, hopefully, we're trying to see if we can get this on. The major networks or the major streaming networks, uh, you know, we we're still in. Um, so right now, currently, we're in slightly out of the pre-production phase in the in the production phase, but we're still developing the script. We're still um, interviewing in-person interviews. Uh, we've done several. We've done over like thirty-six um, virtual interviews. You know, um, we gave a presentation to. Um, which we call BCALA, which is the Black Caucus of ALA, um, their high school. So basically some of the graduates who are in library science, we gave a talk to them about it. And um, we're going to be talking to Asala, which is Carter G. Woodson organization in Jacksonville about it. So we um, right now we're 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 just in um, production mode and trying to make sure that we can get all the interviews that we need so we can go into our um, post-production uh, in the next year. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you too. Thanks.